In this week's episode, I'm talking to Nidhi Yan from Viasat in the USA about how she got into sourcing, how her computer science degree helped her in her career, and what the difference is between sourcing in India and in the US. Welcome to episode 30 of the Sourcing Challenge Show. I'm your host, Mark Longren. I started off by asking Nidhi how she got into sourcing. It's it's very interesting. It's very interesting. So, so uh, I did my bachelor's and master's in computer science. And after five years of studies, I finally realized that coding is not my thing. <laughs> I, I felt that, you know, I, I felt that this is not something I can do for rest of my life. Um, I was not excited about it. So I, I just decided I'm going to take any non-computer science job. And I get a call from a startup. So this is a staffing firm, which is mm -hmm. primarily based out of Medicine Height, Michigan. Mm -hmm. And they were starting their very first operation in India, in Bangalore. And I get a call from them and say, hey, we need a technical person who can actually do technical interviews, right? Um, and, um, and I believe who will be a little cheap, right? So, <laughs> so, um, so I thought this is fun, right? Um, I, I took this job just uh, because first it will pay my bills mm -hmm. and it will give me some time to understand what I really want to do. My ultimate goal was to that I'll get into a um, techno-functional kind of role, mm -hmm. right? So I, I needed some time. So I took this job um, and I started working with them and I actually started liking the job. Uh, <laughs> you know, that, that was a surprise because um, I, to be honest, I had no intentions, right, to uh, stay back there. But, uh, but I, I like the fact that I can talk to the candidate, right, because what was happening it, it, at that time, uh, staffing firms were mushrooming out there. Mm -hmm. and, um, the, but there were very few staffing firms who really could understand candidates' language. Yeah right and like there were like clients who would say oh we just need an object oriented programmer <laughs> uh, but not many recruiters would understand what is object oriented programming and on the other hand i was actually not only asking um, you know if the person is object oriented programmer but i was also asking um, do you understand polymorphism yeah. do you understand inheritance how would you do it how would you implement it right i could do that so yeah. so i i started liking um, or enjoying those small wins and i was able to match a uh, right candidate with the right position and um, I, I started enjoying that's that's the thing uh, <laughs> and i then i never really searched for any techno functional role um, I just stayed back and then within two years I got recruited at Oracle and uh, Oracle kind of changed my whole mindset mm -hmm. right means that was a kind that was a game changer for me because before this it was all job boards right means I get a requirement um, I'll open three four job boards uh, look for skill set control F heavy control F game and you know package the candidate and send it the, but, the, the Indian way of, uh, of doing recruitment yeah right right yeah. Um, in, and I'm talking about 2004 yeah. right and then in 2006 I got into Oracle and I, I worked with few of the smartest recruiters out there I really enjoyed my experience and the best part of my that that experience was that we worked under the leadership of Jan Ackerman he was mm -hmm. our director so I still remember my second day at Oracle right means the first day is the orientation uh, second day Jan calls me and says what do you think about these positions and I was like nothing <laughs> means there's not much to think about and and i clearly remember uh, he he told me you cannot be successful if you are searching for these folks on job boards mm -hmm. and that was kind of an eye opener for me and it was kind of a personal challenge right i can't accept that right means it was kind <laughs> of like oh 
that's that's heavy, right? Uh, so so I said I'm going to prove you, right? And then I uh, worked with really smart recruiters. So I did a lot of brainstorming with them, and um, and I basically strategized it like you know I would look for folks who are either who are Indians based out of uh, India and willing to come back to you yeah. uh, to India, right? Uh, because at that time there were not many companies who were in cloud space in mm. India. So um, and I was able to close those positions, but that's the first time when I started doing sourcing, right? Mm -hmm. That's the first time I was able to give up the job boards, right? And look for other channels where I can find the right candidates. So that's that's how it started. And I really enjoyed it. I really like the fact that, you know, you can go onto the Google Scholar and look for the authors, look for their citations, impact factor. It was all very interesting for me. Um, and um, so that's that's how it started. And then I moved to US. Then there was a break for a few years because I was on a dependent visa. Mm -hmm. And then I restarted my uh, career with a staffing firm, AT Tech. So my ex-manager, Brian Harmon, uh, he recruited me and gave me this opportunity. And, you know, coming from India, having a few years break, uh, yeah. then working for the first time in U.S., it was scary. <laughs> it was scary. It means uh, I still remember our BDM, he, he is from U.K. He was from our U.K. And um, I couldn't understand a single word. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, how will I work with him? But it was it was a lot of fun. I uh, We worked with a lot of startups. So many of these startups were in data science, uh, mm. were in IoT, um, you know, so I, I really enjoyed that. I, I enjoy working uh, on, you know, working or sourcing for such positions. So it was fun experience. Then I, I was there for two years and suddenly I get a call from Bill and Sweat. Well, uh, mm -hmm. so Bill and Bob uh, run their staffing firm from uh, from San Diego, mm -hmm. and they basically recruit recruiters and sourcers and place them uh, at their client side. Yeah. So he he calls me. So Bill calls me and says, "Hey, you know what? There is a sourcer role." I was like, "Okay, it means I'm a recruiter, right? <laughs> Why will I go for a sourcer?" And then he says, "No, you sh you should think about it uh, because because we we already knew each other, right? So um, so he knew that I'm very passionate about sourcing, but I never knew that there is a role which can be a sourcer yeah. role, right? Um, so he explained it to me. I was still not interested, but then just on curiosity basis, I googled it, and. And that's the time when I learned about Dean. I learned about Jim, right? That's that's how everyone, all of us started, right? So I was like, this is interesting. All this while I was doing only half an hour a day, right? Because as a recruiter, you can't do much. Mm -hmm. But now I can do this whole day. And this can be my full-time job. That's awesome. That's exciting. So, so I took this uh, role with Wireset, and I'm with Wireset since last three and a half years, and I'm having fun. It's it's awesome job. And what's what's been the biggest difference for you as well in terms of the sourcing you did in India, um, even you know without having to use job boards, and then what you're doing with Wireset and what you were doing with the with the agency you worked for the first in the US. I feel in terms of um, mindset, mm -hmm. it doesn't really change, right? It means if I if I'm looking for a DevOps engineer, my Boolean search string would remain the same. Yeah. Probably I would write DevOps or CI or C D or pipeline automation, you know, Jenkins, Ansible, whatever. But uh, the Boolean search string would remain the same. Doesn't matter if I'm looking in US or looking at uh, in India. Um, the only thing which would change will be the name of the cities mm. or the zip code, right? That num range will change for us. Um, so, so in terms of the mindset, it will not change. The only thing which will change is like, you know, over the time when you work in a particular location, you, you get connected to the folks, yeah. right? You uh, build a, a network. Um, so yes, then that's, that's something new. Um, if you're going to a new location, but, uh, but, as far as 
um, you know, building the surf string is concerned, as far as sourcing is concerned, it, it will not change. And um, all of the roles now means more and more uh, it's getting global. So um, so it's interesting, like, like you know this, that um, I never ever sourced in Europe before, and suddenly I get requirements from, um, you know, my European uh, offices, and I'm working on it. So, so it's, uh, it's a start. I don't have a huge network but I'm still able to connect with the right folks because mm -hmm. we have really good tools and um, I'm still able to submit these candidates. So yeah, and initially, yes, in terms of network, yes, um, I won't have that, but slowly you will build that. And in, in terms of tools, what's your, what's your go-to tools and you know, what, do you like, what do you like using for your different searches? <laughs> That's, it, it, I I feel it really depends on the requirements, right? We we talk so much about tools, but I really don't have any go-to list. Okay, you know, this is my list. I get any requirement. I'm going to run my uh, rec from using all these uh, tools. I don't do that, to be honest. Means I really like, for example, if I have um, if I have a data scientist position, probably my go-to place would be Kaggle, right? Uh, because you have data scientists there, right? Means it's the easy, yeah. yeah, it's the easy way to find the candidates. Um, I don't believe in working too hard when I have the candidates available there. So, so I probably would go to Kaggle, run the participant list, right? I'll use data miner, um, get all the information. I'll enrich that information using some tool like Webflip Drop, and then I'll. Um, start analyzing that data. Um, if I have a requirement, which is, you know, where I have to really look into GitHub, like for example, the, there was a requirement uh, where I was looking for SDN engineer. Mm -hmm. So so I, I actually wanted someone who is working in one of the SDN controller repository. So in, in that case, I have to go to, um, you know, a repository and do that search. So for that, I use tools like, Seek out mm -hmm. because uh, seek out is really good when it comes to GitHub sourcing, um, and then you have other tools like Git Awards and everything, right, to analyze the candidate. Um, so that's that's what I do. So it, it depends. Like, but if in case I have a vanilla requirement, and by vanilla I mean you know a lot of candidates are in that particular position, like yeah. software engineer. Um, like suppose I need a software engineer in San Jose. Uh, probably I'll go with High Ritual uh, because I really like AI sourcing, right? So I'll just feed the data there. It will uh, source candles for me. And then once it's ready, I'll go back and you know go through that. Or maybe I'll do the Facebook sourcing. So mm -hmm. it, it really depends. Um, I don't believe in using a lot of tools mm -hmm. for one single thing. I just try to strategize it where I can get candidates faster. And then accordingly, I'll, uh, you know, I'll attack to that problem. And if in, if in case I'm not successful, then I'll have, you know, plan B and plan C for that. What's something exciting that you're working on now? So one new thing which I'm doing is uh, I'm doing a lot of European uh, sourcing, right? That's that's something new for me. Yeah. So so that's that's interesting. Um, I'm also right now. Um, so in in my company, what we are trying to do is um, we are trying to build a not necessarily build. Uh, we are actually right now trying to figure out um, you know how a sourcing team mm -hmm. can be more productive, right? Yeah. So we're trying to understand the process, how uh, we worked in the past and uh, what were our metrics at that time, what are our metrics now and how we can improve that. So yeah. we are having a Kaizen process um, next month. And that's that's when we will go through the entire recruiting and sourcing uh, process. So that's, that's interesting, right? Because um, you, you will be involved in that process. You will understand um, how the management looks at the entire process. Yeah. What are the bottlenecks, and you know how we can improve it. So, so that's something I'm really excited about. Um, and then um, 
the way we are right now in mid of uh, launching our third satellite uh, mm -hmm. so we will be launching it next year so the, most of my requirements are directly or indirectly related to ysat 3 that's our yeah. third satellite so definitely you know there's a lot of pressure but um, that's something we are really excited about and we are um, crossing our fingers uh, hopefully everything goes well we know there's a lot of like Indian staffing companies and Indian recruiters recruiting for North America um, but what I what I see more and more is North American recruiters and European recruiters recruiting in India like how is like what would your biggest kind of advice to European or North American recruiters who get requirements that they have to do for a company in, in India yeah, I mean, a lot of things have changed since then, right? Mm. I left India in 2009, uh, so I, I'm not really actively yeah. involved in Indian recruiting. But I, um, I believe the biggest uh, challenge uh, when you recruit in India is the notice period. Mm -hmm. um, I see the notice period can be anywhere between one month to three months, and that's a long enough time for a candidate to change his views right yeah. uh, he can accept your offer but two months three months is a long time for him to look for another job or to negotiate with his current company um, so I, I guess that's a tricky part mm. because in us I'm, I'm not sure in europe but at least in us we have two weeks notice period mm. So it's difficult to really, uh, it's difficult for the U.S. recruiters to uh, manage candidates uh, when they're recruiting. So for, for at least I remember in India when we uh, said, okay, um, you know, the candidate accepted the offer, um, it's still not a closed deal. You still, you continue. We, we, yeah. we never celebrated it when the candidate accepted the offer. We celebrated it only once the candidate joined because, because you know you don't know three months is a long time yeah. um, so I, I guess that's that's the trickiest part if people want to stay in touch with you and and yeah see where mm -hmm. where you know your musings and, and thinking or see where where, where it goes uh, how can I best do that yeah <laughs> I'm active on LinkedIn I'm active on Facebook I'm available on Twitter so you know they, they can catch me um, everywhere anywhere wherever they uh, they want to <laughs> I'm, I'm available <laughs> no thank you very much and i look forward to to meeting you thank you so much mark really appreciate it